God would perplex hell and set it at a loss. I pray, Lord God, today, if you would, by the Holy Ghost of Almighty God, to shed upon us that anointing of the Holy Spirit, Lord, a fresh, fresh, a fresh cup of oil, a fresh cup of honey. Would you, Lord God, take this heart of mine, Lord, and fill it full of honey and let it splash out on everybody in this audience. Not that I'm anything, but the Holy Ghost is everything. Yes. And I pray that Holy Spirit, our representative, our go-between. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you for that. We have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit, through every believer, be bountifully supplied to every other individual here in this place, that the Holy Spirit may move in this place like a smoke and like a fog and like, Lord God, something unseen, but something real. We bless you, Lord, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you just a little bit, a little bit about, <clears throat> you ever been to a place where you just come to a spot somewhere where you, where you just don't know what to do? What do you do? And so the question would be, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Well, I hope to help you with that. I hope that the scripture will help us a little bit. What to do when you don't know what to do? You say, I don't know. I want to do something, but I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what you can do. First of all, you can talk to God about what, you, what you're thinking about. Whatever you're thinking about, God wants to talk to you about it. If you think it, if it comes to your heart and it comes to your mind, it'd be good to wrestle with it a bit and talk to God about whatever he's talking to you about. It might be, uh, uh, it might be your giving. It might be your living. It could be. The old timer one time, the old, old black preacher come up and spoke, uh, spoke one time, and he said, if you be a, if you be a, if you be a giving while you're a living, you'll be a knowing where it's a going. Yeah, that's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. So our giving, our living, how are we doing along those lines? You can make a difference mm -hmm. in your church. You can make a difference in your community. Your testimony will go before you if you keep your testimony correct on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's one thing to be saved and to claim salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's another thing to follow after him in discipleship mm -hmm. because if you follow after Jesus, you will have to suffer a little bit along the way. See, this is a crazy thing that people have come up with in modern, modern times. They, they say that all your problems will be relieved and you'll have no more problems at all. Whoever tells you that, run as fast fast as you can yeah. get away from it yeah. because that is not so because if you're a human being on this earth you are full of problems or potential problems there could be problems along the way and we do have problems along the way but he our savior guides us through our problems when you come to it he's the one that'll take you through it amen you can't get through it without him. Because if you're a Christian, you're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or going into a storm. There's a storm raging, but he's the master of the sea. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Not only was that a great song, that's a fact. He's the master Amen. of the sea. Amen. When he speaks, the wind comes down, and the wave comes up, and they kiss one another and just lay down. Amen. Why? His presence. That's where God. So we want to know where God's at? He's where, you, where your need is. Whatever your need is, I don't care how bad, how ugly, how vile, or how pleasant that it is, he's where your need is. If you need to just thank God this morning, it'd be a good time to just to sit right there and just thank him over Amen. and over and over again. Because every breath that you take is a blessing from God. Every time you open your eyes and look, is a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. Every heartbeat, and if you sit and count them for a while, hallelujah, oh, that pulse rate, we pay attention to that. And doctors look at it and they test it and it gets irregular. Then there's a bit of a problem. Oh, let your spiritual heartbeat be real. I'm about to get carried away with some other stuff. But listen to me. Now, what do you do? What do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when you lose your job? You don't know what to do. What do you do? Amen? What do you do? See, don't expect the government to always pay it. Nope. Say amen right there. Amen. Because I, they run out of that after a while because that's your money. Amen. 
You're just getting a lien on your money. Yep. Your children will pay it, and their children will pay it, and now our great, great, great grandchildren will be the ones paying it. You see, somebody pays for what? Never trust a government that'll tell you we're going to give you something. Mm -hmm. Never trust it. Hey, somebody famous said that. I'm not lining myself up with him. That was Ronald Reagan. Hey, Amen. Run from it if it's going to give you something. It won't give you anything until somebody paid for it. Say amen right there. Amen. I mean, practice amen. on amen. Because when we get to him, we all be saying amen, amen. all the time. Amen. Praise God. And so what if there's a pronounced illness or a death in the family or a change of job? Don't you hate to change jobs? You get a good job going and get it going, get it going. Maybe it'll not be such a good job, but you get used to that job and you just dread like all giddy out to get a new job. You got to get used to everything and everybody and get used to everything. I just like to stay, stay straight, you know. And then so, you know, sometimes the church is going down. One pastor come to me and he said, hey, preacher. He said, I've been, I've been fighting. I've been fighting members by the multitude, deacons by the dozen, and hell by the acre. What am I going to do? Yep. I said, you do what the rest of us do. You just pray until the clouds go away. Amen. And you keep on going forward. Always go forward. Amen. Remember. Well, you say there ain't nothing you can do about what has happened because it was grace that brought you thus far, and it's grace that will lead you on. Amen. 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 Yeah, but if grace brought you this far, then grace is going to lead you on. Amen. Oh, yes, when we think about that. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? Well, <laughs> when I thought about that, how can you make a difference in your church? How can you make a difference in your community? What can you do? Number one, you walk by faith. You simply, well, is that simple, preacher? Oh, that's simple. Governor DeSantis is watching me. <laughs> Every time I look up at the first one I see back there. Hey Amen. I'm going to tell everybody I was in service with Governor DeSantis. Amen. Amen. And they'll say, oh, that was just wonderful. Amen. I'm telling you, that is the strangest thing ever was. <laughs> Bless the Lord of oh my soul. But what do you do? You walk by faith. And I hopefully I can give you three things here to help you. We have an opportunity. Now, folks, look, with all the opposition around, and there's opposition to Christians, right? There's oppositions to staying in a good Christian college. There's opposition in good Christian school. There's opposition. There's a fight against it all the time. It never will let up. There's a fight in politics. God help us deliver us from politics. Amen. I've told you this before, but one more time won't hurt. The devil said, don't do it, and I thought I would do it. But politics is made up of two Greek words. Poly means many, and ticks are bloodsuckers. <laughs> Politics. Hallelujah. All right, that's done. I got it all out of my system now. I'm better. And I'll tell you something. Now, now, if there ever was a true Christian, now is the time to stand up and be counted as a faithful warrior of, a, of the cross. If ever you stood, Amen. stand now like never before. Amen. I'm telling you, it's what the Bible teaches. Because in Bible prophecy, you come down to this time in our land, and we find out where America fits in Bible prophecy is total confusion. And that's where we're at. Total people don't know what to do or how to do it. Well, here's what you do. You walk by faith. Amen. You just simply, well, people say, How you, how's your business coming along? I'm walking by faith. God will bless that. Yeah. Amen. Don't yeah. hang your head and say, oh, oh, I've got the molly grub. Oh, oh, I'm, uh, you know, don't hang your lips so low you'd scoop gravels up walking through the parking lot. Uh, I mean to tell you, pick yourself up, grin through it. Laugh your way through it. Praise God. I'm talking about being, uh, you can seriously laugh. But what do you do? You do right. Mm -hmm. What's right? What God says is right. If we don't ri line up with God's right, we're wrong. That's Amen. right. Amen. You see, we wonder what it says in, in uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. We was good until God said that. Yep. What do you mean? I'm a Christian. I ain't got no wicked way. Any way that doesn't match with God and biblical standards is a wicked way. Amen. Yes, sir. And that's how you get refreshed as a Christian. Yeah. You refresh what you already know. 
And that's how revival hits a church. You need revival here. We need revival in Okeechobee. We need revival in Fort Pierce. We need revival on the Treasure Coast. We need revival in North Florida and South Florida. We need revival in West Virginia, Ohio, and North and South Carolina. I can name them all. We need revival to strike. And you say, yeah, we'll never see revival like that. Don't hang around me long because we'll disagree right real quick. God can bring revival as long as there's one breathing Christian that'll believe God, amen, amen. and are willing to walk by faith amen. and give it all to God and just hand it over to God and say, I surrender all, all to thee I owe. Listen, he paid it all. Trust him with what he paid. Amen. He amen. paid with his blood. He paid on Calvary's tree. He paid when he died and was taken to the tomb. He paid, hallelujah, Amen. for you and I. Amen. Oh, what a Savior. I'm about to be cranked up a little bit. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Folks, we have an opportunity to be the best Christian we've ever been. Yes, sir. Right now, we have opportunity right now. If you've not trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you're dependent on some type of religious uh, authority of some sort or the other, or a creed, or a, or, or, or a line of something, uh, I, I could go on with many things. Now is the time to say, I personally want to know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Amen. If God's Amen. talking to you about that, you need to get that fixed. So watch ye and stand fast in the faith, this great opportunity to have 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? That's Listen, right. our flesh is faithful. Flesh is faithful to do what flesh does. But flesh will lead you astray. Yes. Flesh will take you down roads you don't want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay, and you'll have to pay a price that you didn't want to pay. A thought becomes an act, an act becomes a pattern, a pattern becomes a development of character, which becomes a person's destiny. But it all started with one single thought. One thought. Yes, sir. One thought got it started. You know how a bank, you know how a bank gets robbed? Somebody sits somewhere and thinks it up and figures out, draws a dry diagram, takes it very serious, and the first thing you know, they walk into a bank and run away with a two or three hundred thousand dollars. And my credit card. <laughs> he didn't get much. <laughs> you got to think a minute. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But what started it? He thought of it. Yes. That's what sin is. See, if you if you if you get a thought about sin, wonder how this would be if I would just kind of lean that way just a little starts with a thought yep. see if you flirt with the world you're apt to make a date with the world and if you make a date with the world a date demands action mm -hmm. you got to show some way or the other why you are dating now you got to follow me here now just take it as, as, as it is and think about this. So if you flirt, and then that demands some type of, uh, of a date that demands action, prove yourself one way or the other, and then after that, uh-oh, wow. How did I get here? How did I go that far? It all started with a simple thought, a thought. See, you don't have to have pornographic eyes to have a pornographic heart. Mm -mm. Boy, it got quiet. Mm -hmm. But ladies and gentlemen, it's a serious business. Today, if we ever got serious about the things of God, today is the day we get serious about it. If you ever wanted to see revival in America, it'll have to start one church at a time, which means one single person at a time. Somebody's got to believe God. Amen. Somebody just have to believe. It's that simple. I'm not being mean. I'm not cutting anybody down. I'm just reminding us. I have to remind me. Yeah. I've got to remind me because I'm going to be pre doing the preaching. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. I'm, I've got to have something going, amen, and I want the Holy Ghost of God to guide me, and he is. This morning, God is speaking to somebody this morning. God has never failed you. 
Look in our look at look in our past, like Joshua chapter one verse five, where it says there, he God said, I will not fail thee. It was a very political uproar time for for him at that time, for Joshua. But he got a little worried and got a little sideways, had a bunch of evil people after him. But I want to tell you this. He said, God said, I will not fail thee. Don't you worry about it. Amen. He was, hey, God was there last week, wasn't he? You remember yes. last month? Yes, sir. Somebody may think on this. Remember last month when you thought you could not get through that? Yeah, yeah. God brought you right through it. Yes, he did. Well, maybe it was last week. Maybe it was last year. Amen. It, it, it looked like, well, I'll tell you what, the last three years have been something. Yeah. Isn't it? It's really been something that we walk by faith. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, what a wonderful thing. I'm your friend. The Holy Spirit is your friend. We are friends. Hallelujah. And so God's never failed us. God's never forsaken us. Amen. It's what he said. Look at his presence. He's with us right now. Not only when you look at your past, think about where you could have been. But when you look at, look at he said in Hebrews 13 and 5, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It's pretty hard to get away when somebody said they'd never go. That's right. Amen. Sorry. Amen. That's what he said. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you. You say, yeah, but I've been a little bit mean and honorary toward God. God said, I'll never, I'll never leave you. You're mine. If you're his, you can't, you can't get gone. You, you might go away, but you can't get far. Amen. You won't get far. Amen. Not if you're one of his children. You won't get very far. You'll find a place of repentance. You'll find a place of, of, of realizing, wait a minute. I can't go that direction. I'm, I named the name of Jesus. Well, I can't do that and then keep doing what I'm doing or what I'm thinking or what's going on. Amen. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, let's think that way and it'll keep, it'll keep us all out of trouble. Praise God. You gotta remember, walking with God is not a leap in the dark every time. Now, sometimes it seems like some things are a leap in the dark. You wanna change jobs, that, that's a pretty good leap, you know. Especially if you got a good job right now, you better keep it. Yeah. Better, better, better keep it. Might be kind of hard to get another one. And then again, it maybe it'd be easy. I don't know. Depends on. I never did go look for a job. I always went looking for work. My daddy told me when I left home, and I said, "Dad, I'm, I'm struggling trying to find a job." He said, "Don't look for a job." I said, "Say what?" He said, "Don't ask the man for a job. Tell him you want to work." Yep. Yeah. You got some tools, son, because I gave them to you and take your tools with you. Yeah. I was a welder. Well, I never will for getting a, getting a job. I mean, I was really in bad shape trying to find a job. I couldn't get one in the coal mine. I'd been in the coal mine in and out, you know, for 30-some <laughs> years. And, and boy, and things got bad, and I, uh, they shut our mine down. And so I was out hunting for work. And I had my bag. I was a welder, and I had my bag of tricks, you know. I had, I had my slag hammer. I had my... I had my, my all my tools and my striker and my <laughs> my shield and I had my stuff and I had my bag in my truck. Come up to a place and sit there nearly all day waiting on the boss. Finally, he had been in the mine. And he came out and I waited on him and he was on a piece of broken down equipment that hauled him in and out of the mines. They call it a portal bus. And anyhow, and long story short. They come out and I heard the thing squeaking, making the funniest bang, 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 an awful racket coming over the track. And, he said, let's get out of here. And he said, uh, before the next shift co comes on, we got to have somebody weld that. And they looked around at one another and said, well, the welder's gone. And I said, uh, hey, my name's Tom Milam, and I've been sitting here waiting on you to come out, and I'm applying for a job, and, and uh, you want that welded, I'll weld it for you. What? I said, yeah. Well, I said, you want me to weld it? I got my stuff. If you've got a, a welder and, and some torches and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bring him around here. And you, you do. I said, yeah, I'll fix that for you. He said, you looking for a job? He said, you got a job. Amen. <laughs> I went to work the next day. Amen. <laughs> Why? I was looking right. I wasn't looking for a job. I looked for some work. And just think about that. For Jesus, I want to do something for him because he's done something for me. Amen. Amen. Now listen, I know I know the hour's getting a little bit late. Don't worry. I don't know what time you used to getting out of here. So let's let's just see what God will do. Because God has given us something today. I believe we need we need it very desperately bad. So walk by faith because we have an opportunity in the day that we live to walk walk in faith the best we have ever walked in our life. Right now. And then secondly, I want to tell you something. See, God's not forgotten us. 
He said, I won't forget you. Amen. I can't forget you. Amen. Not if you're on my register, I can't forget you. God has a record book. I know my name is there. Woo! Glory to God, I'm telling you. It's there written in blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Written in blood. How much did he love me? He spread his arms out this much and said, I love you this much. Amen. What a Savior we have. And our Savior has not forgotten us. He is, his presence is ever near us. We're not being forsaken. We, we've not failed like we think. We see a failure, a true failure, somebody never gets up again. Yeah. You can yeah. fall and fall and fail and fail, but if you get back up, you're doing pretty good. Amen. I'm yeah. looking at a lot of folks here that got back up. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Yep. Ah, you're looking at a guy right here that's got back up numerous times. I got back up. And I'll keep getting up because my eyes are on him, not on man. Then we won't need to worship God fully. Worship God fully. What does it mean to worship God fully? Oh, listen, I'm telling you, that means something. To worship him fully. That's, we have an obligation. Not only do we have a great opportunity during all the opposition, but we have a great obligation to fulfill yeah. according to what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. We have, God has longings that he wants fulfilled by you and by me. Amen. Mm -hmm. He wants you to fulfill some of his longings that God has and has laid down in the scripture. Hallelujah, what a savior. So we're to worship him. We're, what are we supposed to do? Praise him as the God that saved you. We, we owe him praise and glory. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 teaches us there. For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You were created for God. Mm -hmm. If you named the name of the Lord and you got saved and you trusted him, then you're one of his, and he calls you his beloved. And he is altogether lovely. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the bright in the morning star. He is the lily of the valley. Hallelujah. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He is our good. He is mercy. He is grace. He is marvelous. He is wonderful. Oh, Jesus is wonderful. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Isn't it the love of Jesus something wonderful? Yes. Isn't he great? Isn't he marvelous? Isn't he great? Somebody says, uh, where did God come from? He's never been anywhere to come from anywhere because he's God. He's God almighty. And he's God omnipotent. He's God omniscient. He's God omnipresent. He is, was, will be. <laughs> Amen. And he always will take care of business. Oh, give yourself to him in every way, area of your life. Praise God. Worship him fully. What the psalmist say? I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me. And he picked me. He heard me. He heard my cry Amen. and picked me up out of a horrible pit and set my feet. He took me. I was stuck in the mud, and he got me out of the mud, and he cleaned me off. I tried to clean myself up many times by going through some systems and some things and some services, trying to do better. But one day, I gave it all up. October the 14th, 1966, 15 minutes till midnight, while the Holy Ghost was on his way to somebody else, heard an old country boy cry out, Oh God, I'm lost and I don't want to go to hell. And business picked up, and the Holy Spirit put on his brakes and came right down to where I was at while he was taking care of somebody else. He's omniscient, he's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. Amen. He's everything you need. Yes. Give him your all. Surrender. Throw up the white flag and surrender yes. to the Lord. If you yes. ever surrender, surrender to that. Thank Don't God. surrender up to the world and the devil and the things of the world just to get along, go along to get along. Oh, I'm telling you, yes, proclaim him as a God who will hear and help us. He tells us in Isaiah and Jeremiah, my Ear is not heavy, I cannot hear, nor is my arm shortened, that I cannot reach and get you. Amen. That's who God is. Aren't you glad for such a Savior? Y'all get anything out of this? Amen, amen. amen. I'm trying to quit, and y'all won't let me for some reason. Y'all must just keep on amen and <laughs> praise God. Then so not only should we praise him and proclaim him, we should, we should publish him as the God 
who that can be trusted. Yeah. God that can be trusted. We can trust him. Now you can't hardly trust people. I hate to tell you that. There was a time, even in my life, and I'm going on 79. I can't believe I'm 78 and a half years old. But I remember my time when used to a man's word was a bond. Yes, sir. I remember that. Even when I was growing up in my teen years and up into probably around in my 20s. But then everything began to change there in the 60s. Everything started changing. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. How uh, some people, these kids around here are saying, what's the 60s? <laughs> <laughs> That's like ancient history, right? It is. But in the 60s, a lot of things took place. Do you realize some of the stuff's going on right now in the 60s? During hearings in our government, there were people made statements that they laughed at that's come to bite them right now. Yes, sir. Concerning homosexuality and concerning abortion and concerning all those things. And they laughed at it and said, that guy don't know what he's talking about, but I want you to look what has happened since. Yes, sir. I'm telling you now, folks, the devil is out to destroy. The devil runs a 24-hour wrecking crew. Yep. They never stop. They're after you. If the hounds of hell could get you, they'd chase you up a tree and get you. Yeah. But the hounds of hell's only on your trail. Yeah. They can't get you if you're one of God. Are y'all still with me? Amen. Don't worship him fully and let's publish him. What is them old timer? What is that old that old spiritual? Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hey, hey shout it from the rooftop. I've went to a church up in the open door open door Baptist church and in uh, the, the inner city of Detroit before I've been up there and preached numerous times. And in the church, they've got a, they've got a rooftop for right in front of the pulpit. It looks like a rooftop. The gable end of the house. And, so he said, and the preacher said, the Bible says to shout it from the rooftop and they'll lean out over that rooftop. <laughs> and I'll preach over that. Just thought I'd mention that. Amen. Something to think about. Now listen to me. The Lord waits for us that he might help us. Now watch, I'm just about done right here, but I want you to see one more thing. If, if, we, if you have patience to do that. All right, we're going to walk by faith now. I'm telling you what to do when you don't know what to do. Because what does it say here? You, the, for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Amen. So the days of our year and all that right here, verse 12 says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. What to do when you don't know what to do. Amen. You walk by faith and you worship him fully. One more thing. You wait faithfully. Yes, it's sir. the one word that preachers hate to hear. Well, we don't hate to. It bothers us when somebody says, wait. When God says, wait. Oh, boy. Wait. Wait on what? Well, let's, let's see what it says. We'll be done. Walk by faith which is the greatest opportunity we've ever had right now. And to worship him fully, we have an obligation to observe the highest authority to observe him right now and to wait faithfully. What does that mean? That means to obey and to occupy. The Bible teaches us to occupy till I come. Occupy. What does it mean, occupy? Occupy. Means where you mean we'll have to work all my life? More than likely. My daddy told me that when I was about 15 years old. He said, son, you might as well get used to it. You have to do it all your life. And I said, I am not going to do it all my life. <laughs> but guess what I've done all my life? I've worked right up to now. I still work. Wonder when I'll get to retire. See, I, I, there's one thing getting in the way of me retiring. I keep refiring. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> I keep like that old lawnmower out there. You work on it long enough, you'll get it refired. It'll, it'll go after a while once you find the problem. Yeah. He may get enough parts changed. Say amen right there. Amen. Amen, amen to that. Yes, indeed. But wait faithfully. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he, watch this now, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Why? He's our salvation. Yeah. Psalm 62 and 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. Yeah. That's what he said. I'm just going to take him at his word. And then secondly, he is my defense. Psalm 62 and 2, again in that verse, he is my defense. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Now I'll tell you right now, I've heard some hard, rough preaching. Preacher, and you have too. I've had some preaching that sounded so mean that I don't even know 
how in the world they got away with preaching like that? Yeah. Now that don't bother me. Now mean preaching bothers me. Now rough preaching don't bother me. I won't go home. Yep. You won't get me to go home. Nobody can preach rough enough to get me to go home. I may come to the altar. <laughs> yeah. But I won't go home. Some people say, oh, he preaches too rough. I'm leaving. I'm leaving out of here. Nah. You're taking, you're carrying all your baggage right with you, going someplace else. Hey, man, just might as well stick around. Yep. Stick around through the good and the bad, through the ugly and through the pretty. Yep. Just stay with the stuff. That's all God wants us to do. Have faith in God. Yep. Worship him fully. And wait faithfully. Wait for what? Just wait. Just wait on God. But while you're waiting, occupy. While you do occupy. What is this occupation? What is this we have? We're Christians. Yeah. Then we are to act like Christians. Yeah. We are to pray mostly. You realize the number one thing you can do is pray? Yeah. The number one thing you can do is pray and believe what you pray. Yeah. Believe what you pray. Hey, listen, folks, if you're sitting there today and you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, do you realize the prayer that God will hear and you will bless all of heaven? When the prayer that you pray would be, Oh, God, I know I'm a sinner. I realize it. And I'm, I'm tired of being lost and on my way to hell. And I want to go your direction. I want to go the way the Bible says for me to go. I want to go the way that that crazy preacher keeps waving and hollering and stuff. Maybe I'll get him to shut up. And I'll just go ahead and trust you, Lord. And if you'll do that, you'll bless all of heaven. And you'll bless this crowd. And you'll bless those that's praying for you. Because if you're lost without Jesus, there's somebody praying for you. There's somebody Amen. spending a little time. There's somebody going to a secret place. There's somebody going somewhere talking to God about you and your condition. And if you're having all kind of struggles and don't know what to do, and you're blinded by a lot of different things, and your things that people don't even know anything about, God knows. Just let him know whatever he's talking to you about. How about coming to get that straightened out? Yeah. God will help you with that. He is our salvation. He is our defense. And finally, he is my refuge. Psalm 10, 62, 7, 8. He's the rock of my strength. My refuge is in God. And God is a refuge for us. Amen. He is my shelter. He is my place of hiding. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my place I can get to. Serve him gladly, folks. Amen. After all, he served us Amen. by giving his life. Amen. My soul. Amen. What what a thought. I want to tell you something. When you want God, now watch it now and I'm finished. When you want God as much as you want another breath. Now I've talked to some good friends. Some of them passed away during the COVID thing. They got sick, was compromised some kind of way, and they died. But some of them pulled through. Oh, the testimonies I've heard of how that God pulled them through and how they waited and how they prayed and they saw the results of prayer. Mm -hmm. We wonder why some had to go and some mm -hmm. had to stay. I can't answer that. I don't have any way of answering that. I know that diseases are bad things. And it's disease. Somebody said, well, why did God allow that? I don't have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. It's because the disease got them. Mm -hmm. God didn't get them. The disease got them. That's a whole other story. We mm -hmm. could talk about a lot of things right in there. But when a disease gets you, and, and unless God does something during that time, you, you, me, we're going to pass on because we're flesh and you're only going to live so long and you will check out. And oh, it bothers us when the young ones check out. But all the testimonies I've heard, and they said, if I ever prayed, that's the hardest I ever prayed in my life, but I got to pray. Now watch this and I'm done. Got, they got to praying like this. You remember back when you wanted to beg something from the kitchen from your mother and she's busy in the kitchen and she's got about 10 things going all at one time. She's making a pie and she's making a cake and she's got taters on. She's got macaroni boiling. She's got this going and that going. Y'all know the scenario better than I do. I try to cook a little bit, but I'm apt to mess all that up. My timing gets off. And But, uh, but, but listen. And, and then here comes a couple of dirty-faced kids in the house. Mommy, I'm hungry. Well, you got to wait till supper. I'm hungry. And they look up and see them big chocolate chip cookies. 
So mommy, give me one of them cookies. I will give me, give me a cookie. Give me a cookie. She said, get on out of here. And you go outside and play that I'll tell you to come in. She may not say it like that, but that's just stand with me here for a moment. But now watch this. I'm, this is serious. But look at this. What if that kid gets on the awfulest face you ever saw? I don't know what to tell you, but that cookie. Oh, here. Take it. Go on. Now, God don't want to act that way, but what I'm saying is this. When they want that cookie so bad, we ought to pray like that little child. Pray and beg until you get it. Beg until you get it. Pray to God like you just got to have it or you're going to die. You say that's the silliest illustration, but we all have lived right through all of that. Listen, folks. When you pray, knowing God hears, and God is going to give the increase, and God is going to help, then we must believe God. Father, in Jesus' name, oh, 